Gilmore? <laughs> What's going on, Johnny? We are here. I Bros Unite. This is the Volume One Edition. A long time coming. Hey, that's a that looks like an interesting drink, Johnny. You're drinking right there. What is it? It's Magic Potion. Oh well, dude. I also have a I'm magic sponsored drink. by them. Yeah, well, I have a Magic Red drink actually. It has. Oh, magic. Well, it helps facilitate fat loss and improve muscle synthesis. You know. That's all right. I mean, it's not as magical as my potion. Okay. Well, you know what? My sponsor's better than your sponsor. Brought to you by McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> so what I want to say, guys, we have the man with the most luscious eyebrows on YouTube. Okay? It, it must be said. It, say that again, Johnny. The best eyebrows there is. You know, and, Chris Lovato tries, enough. but he can't hang with it. Oh, it, well, well, first of all, let's just address the, the elephant in the room. Are those brows natty? Like, can we just talk about that? They're... I I wouldn't even I wouldn't even call them YouTube natty as some people say. I would say th they just compete untested. They don't even. Oh, so you, you I'm, I'm honest anything. here, okay? I don't want people to think that they can just grow this like like without trying or without my potion that I'm talking about. You know. Well, they the have to buy the product. Favorite. Untested, okay? We'll just leave it at untested. Let the people make an informed decision about this topic. <laughs> so, referencing our sponsor right now, I want to hop into the hot topic. Is uh, before uh, Johnny, it marks pretty much a year ago, by the way, right about now that we first started talking. And I saw your channel and like the 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 Rip -a -toe squad and just all the videos out, and I'm like, holy shit, this is some really solid content, right? And over time, it just blossomed into an awesome channel. Like your channel is a channel that I'll reference to someone if they want further resources when it comes to serious training. Yeah. And what a lot of people will see though, Johnny, is that uh, you talk now a lot about powerlifting, it's a very, it's powerlifting focus. <laughs> but a little known fact is what? Is, uh, can we talk about your biceps a little bit? Can we talk about aesthetics? The can we- Biceps, you know, yeah. that, that's, all, that's all I train, but- Basically. But no, that's, yeah, that's what, um, that's what I think that there's a weird perception right now yeah. where, where I think it, it just comes from the black and white thinking where it's like people want to say either that you're just purely a power lifter or you're just purely a bodybuilder or yeah. the thing is in the thing is that they want to say is if you're strong then they say oh why aren't you huge yeah but then they don't understand that you can you can prioritize one so it's like I'm never gonna start my week of training with saying okay let me bring up my biceps relative to my quad size like I don't care about that but then it doesn't mean you have to literally never train your biceps like at all and only do three lifts and that's it. They think about it in a black and white perspective. When yeah, they think about it's, the idea. It's like, oh, he, he's a power lifter. It's like, that's why he's so small because he doesn't train things. It's like, actually, Johnny, do you train your biceps? <laughs> yes. And that's, yeah, and that's actually another good, funny point is that I think a lot of times people don't understand how genetics play a role in it yeah. where it's like, There'll be someone, there's literally on my squat video where I squat at 495 for four, someone literally said, he's like, uh, how do you squat so much? Our legs are the same size and I squat 225 for three. It's like, no, our legs are not the same size. Well, well that's, well, Johnny, let's, let's address the other big issue because that's why I made that video on Monday about uh, the perception maybe on YouTube and what it means to be natural. And also, speak for me about this is, do you find you get this where a lot of times people might erroneously compare with you They'll say, like, you know, our legs are the same size. They'll say to you. And meanwhile, there is a large discrepancy. It reminds me when I was a young lifter and I thought, like, oh, man, I'm going to look like Arnold in about a year. I'm about, ha I'm about halfway there right now, right? I just got to put in a little bit more work. Yeah, that's what – I mean, I think Perception. you see across the board. You see that with strength numbers – with strength stats as well because I think what it is is that people underestimate the difference, too, between certain levels where it's like – I've noticed that where if someone will squat 400, it's like maybe they go from 300 to 400 relatively quickly, and then it's like, oh, I'm going to hit 500, you know, <laughs> a couple months, and then it's like, all right, next year, still 425 or something. Yeah. <laughs> like, it Dude. just takes, I it, think it's the combination of that, where they, they misjudge where they're at right now, and yeah. then they also misjudge how long it takes to get to where, you know, maybe you look muscular in perfect lighting, if, you know, while 150 pounds, but to actually look muscular, you know, at 180 pounds or something at all the time, yeah. probably, yeah, it takes a long time to where, I think that's where people just underestimate, there's like a disconnect there. I remember when I first started training with Jeremy, and, uh, like, he would reference his numbers, the squat or deadlift, I would just ask, you know, how much do you lift, and he would say, like, I have, like, a 722 squat, right, and I'm like, wow, that's, that's next level, but yeah. I think in my head, I'm like, you know, if you, 
the difference between 600 to 700 is probably the same difference between 500 to 600, and it's not. Yeah. It's each each extra hundred pounds, that ceiling of complexity to get there gets harder and harder. Right? It takes yeah, longer that, and longer. Smarter and smarter training. Yeah, that's what I think. I think it, it really is just the amount of experience that it's like a lot of people. When they, if you lack that, if you're like a 15 year old, it's like you just really have no idea about a lot of those details where it's like to you, it's just, you just lift and you get stronger and that's it. It's just A to B and that's all they're thinking. Yeah. When it's like, especially what I think actually is probably a even bigger component to it. I bet, I wonder if Jeremy's ever dealt with the injuries yeah. because it's like, I bet once you get from six to 700, you probably yeah, have. You know, just that toll it probably takes on your body is probably a whole different topic that you really have to worry about. Well, that's that's actually a big one too. Um, is I was speaking with uh, a buddy of mine that's a sports therapist. He treats Jeremy, and he also treats myself. And he was saying the similarities were the progression of lifting as you lift heavier and heavier. Just the risk of obviously injury goes up. A variety of factors. Your body wearing down because you're pushing it to the limit, yeah. right? Uh, just more and more. But he said what's interesting, the same patterns of injuries then will occur at those relatively heavier weights. Well, like uh, the, the point being that, you know, if you're deadlifting right now, 300, squatting, three, like 300, whatever, benching 225, mm -hmm. with perfect form, the risk of injury is less. As your weight goes up, if you move that to a 600-pound deadlift, even with perfect form, the load on your body, that stress there's a small risk there that's where i think it's the stronger you get the more those small decisions or those small factors you know play a role and i think that's i think that's a good point that you brought up form because something i've noticed is that with my channel is sometimes i get comments where they say you know why are you even you know that concerned about form or mechanics and they say like oh you 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 focus so much on form but you know sometimes you just got to lift and just got to lift hard no. And it's like the heavier you lift, the more you have to pay attention to form, if anything. Yeah, and that's the thing. And the thing is, is that um, is the stronger you get, and the the more you lift, it's you just have to think of it like it's just cumulative. You're adding on. So it's like if you squat and you just basically you know your back's folding over every single time, you're strengthening that particular position. So you're going to get stronger doing that. So it's going to be harder and harder to break. Yeah, so then you're going to get to a big squat, and then it's going to just you know, you're gonna basically you're bound to get hurt at some point if you just let that keep breaking down over and over again. Yeah, you can only carry shitty form so far up before inevitably yeah. you'll get injured or your progress will stall. And right. even then, a lot of people misinterpret. It's like KK's deadlift. Uh, I forget what's his. Do you know his full name? The Russian. Yeah, it's a uh, Constantine. Uh, yeah, yeah. Something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where it's like people will misinterpret his form, they see he has a ton of upper back rounding and his yeah. lower back is pretty much solid. So yeah. then people misinterpret it. Then you see them deadlift and their just Lord. whole back is just all Lord. rounded. It's like they don't see the intricacies even with those guys. Yeah. Uh, they wow. know what they're doing when they're doing it. They may have unconventional methods, but usually there's still some logic to it. Yeah, well, and that's the other thing too is the ease with which they lift something makes it deceptive how much subtle... Uh, nuance there is to their form a lot of the time where for instance, a lot of the dudes are set up I could say once again just watching a couple cats They do 40 things right in the space of maybe two seconds But it's, it's hard just to pinpoint all those things because it makes it really look effortless a lot of the time Yeah right? And that, that's maybe another fact that people think oh they just, they just throw up and lift right? they, yeah. just go, they just go up and squat right? <laughs> They just go and squat that heavy weight yeah, I think that gets back to your your topic about perception of how, you know, of basically of how the average person performs. That's why I think it's really beneficial for someone to just videotape themselves lifting and then watch it because it's like a lot of times you feel like, you know, you're just killing it and just everything's going well and you just look at video of your deadlift and you're like, uh, it didn't quite look how I thought it felt. Shifting it right back on this uh, train of gains, okay, the gain train. <laughs> Describe for me a little bit, so we use this phrase, athletic aesthetic, you've, you've kind of used it before, <laughs> talking about your actual training style. Would you classify yourself as a pure powerlifter? And what would you say the overarching goals are with regards to your training? And do you believe that incorporating uh, training outside of pure powerlifting is detrimental to that goal? Meaning some hypertrophy work with your biceps. I, I use that simple show muscle as an example, but <laughs> uh, you know, your thoughts on that. Yeah, I think that's a. Uh, I think that's something that really is misunderstood. Is that 
that definitely powerlifting is by far my goal. Like that's yeah. definitely what I train for. But it's like I think the thing is that there's like an assumption that if you're training for powerlifting, that it's got to be you know three lifts and that's it. That it's you know bench, squat, deadlift, just do it over and over again, and that's all you can do. But it's like when I got into powerlifting, how I got actually into it was I was competing in track. Actually, something that is really uh, notable is. I think a lot of times I get questions about mobility and that's something where doing track just simply and in track you obviously you do plyos every single day pretty much yeah. I've noticed that that to me or or that for me is what has developed my mobility to where now it's really easy to maintain yeah. so it's like once you get you know once you get essentially uh, proficient in a lot of different kind of dynamic movements right. then it becomes very easy then you know doing a back squat below parallel just really becomes automatic. The the exact same thought. I have the preparatory nature necessary in order to have the proper sprint mechanics. The plyos yeah. that you do prior set the mobility requirements sets you up automatically for a lot of the lifts, such as the squat, to squat with proficiency because that yeah. mobility requirement is quite high. And the work, yeah. the dynamic work that you do, those movements, right? Yeah, and it's like once you get good at them. At one point, it's really hard to, it's like with lifting, it's really hard to completely lose it. Talk to me then about your whole, the training philosophy. Uh, talk to me about what you mentioned with athletic aesthetic and hypertrophy and powerlifting. Just overall, your training, what you preach, what you think is applicable to people. Yeah, I think what's funny is actually having kind of that mentality where I've always had the mentality that I want to use the powerlifting movements to get stronger rather than get stronger to perform the powerlifting movements. Right. And what's funny is it's almost a reverse, like I've never did West Side Barbell, you know, that method when it was popular, yeah. you know, because of almost the opposite reason where a lot of people would say, you know, the specific or the said principle, you know, about specificity yep. where it's like for me I almost thought the opposite where the reason why I didn't want to vary too much was because to me it made no sense to do like a bunch of different movements to get better at squatting right. where I'd rather think like what would an athlete do to get his his legs stronger he yep. would simply squat you know squat more weight and then saying. that would just build up his legs like yeah so I think having that mentality it really freed me up to be able to do other things because you know I'm not doing you know, three different squat variations. You know, not I'm not doing, the lift. Right. It's I'm not overcomplicating it, so I'm just focusing on the back squat. Yeah. Then it's like then afterwards, you know, if you want to do something like box jumps or something that's more athletic, or after you know you bench press, then instead of doing you know a bunch of variations, it's pretty easy. I mean, it's extremely easy to just do some bicep curls at the end of a powerlifting workout. Yeah. It's like they're really because there's really no cost to it like the if your shred, biceps what? are sore it doesn't limit the amount of work you can do in terms of any other squat. press yeah. It, yeah it doesn't limit the amount you could squat it doesn't put a large stress on the body where it's gonna be detrimental right. to your overall gains I mean exactly and actually I think it is it is usually probably a better approach because some people talk about doing bicep curls for elbow pain because if you only press over and over again, it's like with anything, if you have like an extreme imbalance, imbalance. then yeah. yeah, usually it's not the healthiest thing. So it's, I mean, it's like anything where it's really easy to just fit in without having to replace it or without having to just say, you know, you don't need a bicep day. <laughs> but whoa, whoa, it's whoa, like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> we need a bicep day, John. I'm sorry, no bicep or calf days. See, the thing is, I wish I... I could do calf races though, but mentally I just cannot get I focused get the ever to do it. <laughs> yeah. I can't. Well, here's a, you're at a much better place than I am though, bro, because you actually have calves. I have non <laughs> I have non-existent calves, right? So you can get away with it, and then no one really calls you out on it. I'm, I have that same mental hurdle for a variety of reasons. I just think, you know, uh, uh, t efficiency of time, yeah. priority of what I'm trying to train for, uh, what I actually find aesthetic. Uh, the other factor oh, yeah. was that when I first started lifting, I'm not even making this up. I witnessed three injuries in my first year and a half at the university gym. And yeah. without a word of a lie, two out of the three were calf-related injuries. Really? Where a, guy, a guy was doing standing calf raises in the Smith machine on a box. And he was doing it with his feet, just the actual front of it on the actual box itself. He was elevating it. And no lie, what happened? The weight was so heavy, his mm. hips shot back. And so he collapsed from the box and the weight on the Smith machine 
fell down and it brought it down onto his neck and he smacked oh, his face. Oh man! On the no, I'm not. This oh. is people that went to the university. This is a true story. Like that's crazy. I mean, yeah. was he okay? Uh, he needed like some sort of plastic surgery before. It. Seriously? So it, it left a pretty big dent on me. For real, that's that's not exclusively that's the crazy. only reason why I don't train calves, but literally just seeing this guy load up 400 pounds, he had you know non-existent calves, and then <laughs> the the cost to benefit so of he, what he, he got, sacrificed. <laughs> he did not win, you know what I mean? And that <laughs> sacrifice he lost. So we could say I'm scarred from calf training, bro. <laughs> but last topic, Johnny, because we want to keep it probably like you know 20 minutes or whatnot, so people can sit down to the toilet, take a poop, <laughs> and then by the time they're done, I don't know why they take 20 minutes. They'll be like, I, hey, I watched that. It's pretty good. <laughs> Let, let's let's talk about the shift in YouTube, both into powerlifting, but also yeah. uh, the expectations, or as we we're talking about before we actually started recording, the false expectations that natural lifters might have. Why I like that, you know, that powerlifting is getting so much more popular is because I think a lot of people can see visible progression yeah. and they can reach levels that are pretty impressive. I think, regardless. Regardless of your genetics, I think in one lift, you can at least reach a certain level that's pretty impressive. Right. So it's like for bodybuilding, I think you won't really find that where it's, you know, bodybuilding is more genetic in my opinion. And also it's the, the level of competition is so much to the point where a natural physique, because we've been right, inundated right. with so many unnatural, and that's not a judgment call, it's just, it simply is. The physiques that we deem to be impressive are not attainable naturally. At least with powerlifting, you could put up solid numbers of some yeah, sort. exactly. That's yeah. exactly how it feels. With powerlifting, you have more potential as a natural because there are different factors. Like you can improve your mobility, you can be you know more precise. That's why I focus so much on technique and all yeah. these little details because you really you know you have to have your programming down well, where you can do so many things. Where in bodybuilding, it's really like you know you can do what whatever you want, but there's a certain limitation there where you're just not going to look like someone else. I think totally, and I think one of the things though too for cats is there's a tangible feeling with powerlifting, with the numbers that you're lifting, the progression that you have, that yeah. there's kind of a purpose to each training session, if that makes sense, yeah. where you're building up to concrete. It's an objective goal that you reach, right? Like when you deadlift, X weight, squat, bench, it's a, pa it's a weight that you did. It's absolute. You achieved it, right? It's like yeah. unlock this code. When it comes to bodybuilding, a lot of times it's more subjective, right? Where you're taking a look right. at a physique and you're trying to, we're trying to determine which one's the best one, and you're being critical on your body, it's like, oh, does this look good? That, uh, this and that. Right. Powerlifting, I, I, it's very, it's concrete. Like I put in the time, I did the programming. Yeah. This is the result. Yeah. Let's yeah. Just say, that was no, that was no judgment placed at all on us on bodybuilding in general or the bodybuilding yeah. community. It's yeah. the question that was originally asked that we're trying to answer was what why is powerlifting or at least incorporating strength movements right or pursuing strength as well as hypertrophy becoming increasingly popular and given yeah. the reason so yeah shout out to everyone that still gets the spray on tan oil dumping, <laughs> gets the speedos like this is not at all you know <laughs> anything against that you know yeah Shit, i'm definitely. gonna do it myself when you come yeah, down I mean, we're, you gonna, see it even, we're gonna have a pose off johnny when you come down i want you to know that you want what we're gonna have a pose off when you come down I have to bring my my man speedo. No, I we provide it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we, oh, I, I need I, I need a pink one. Are you gonna wear? Do you have an alpha alpha one? No.